Hey there, my name is Dan Moyle, and I'm the host of the Storytellers Network podcast. Uh, I gave a presentation for an event called Kalamazoo Social Media Week based on 70 conversations that I've had with storytellers and the lessons that I've learned from them. And I bring you this today because I really believe that the lessons that I've learned are universal for so many of us who are storytellers out there in the world, whether it's in marketing or sales or you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, whether you work for a nonprofit for profit, whether it's personal brand, whatever that looks like for you, if you are a storyteller in some way, I really want to bring you the lessons that I've learned from my first 70 episodes of this podcast. It's been an incredible journey so far. And so I wanted to share that with you today. So you're going to watch the presentation, uh, much like what, how I gave it live, only just a little bit different because it was very timely as of that week kind of a thing. So it'll look a little bit different, but this is how this, that's where this started. Uh, and then I also have at the end a, a link to where you can actually download uh, a quick start guide to starting your own podcast. It's just a, a perspective that I share from how I started my little show. So uh, there are certainly some great resources out there in the world, like the school of podcasting.com, like uh, Sarah Ray Werner and many others, uh, Mark deal, many others out there who, who share, a ton of information on how to get started. So this is just adding a little bit of my perspective to that question. So I hope you enjoy the presentation. If you have any questions, please let me know. Cheers. I know you have an important story to tell, and I want to help you tell that story better and with more confidence. Whether it's for business, a personal brand, a nonprofit, story will set you apart. And here's my story. Toward the end of 2017, I was helping clients book podcast interviews as a marketing tactic. I was also appearing on podcasts myself as a guest expert, and I was beginning to learn all about the podcast community. And all this got me thinking, maybe I could start my very own show to connect with people who could use our podcast interview marketing services. And maybe some of those people could be top tier podcast hosts that we want to get to know for our clients. Plus, I'd be talking with smart people in the marketing and content creation world myself, connecting and learning as I love to do. As a marketing geek and a fan of story, a show about storytelling was all wins for me. So I spent about two months learning all I could about launching a podcast. I tapped into the community and amazing mentors like Jamie J of the show Culture Eats Strategy and his business partner in the production company podcast pilot, Sarah Parrish. Then I envisioned a new season every quarter so I could keep it fresh for me and the listeners. And I laid out my hope for all my potential interviews for the year. My launch was all set for January 1st, 2018, a Monday morning. And now nearly 18 months later, I'm more than 70 episodes into the Storytellers Network, and I love it. I've had dozens of insightful, inspirational conversations, and I've learned a ton, and I want to share that with you today. But first, a clarification, kind of a lesson. What is storytelling? Well, I want to dispel something. It's not Hansel and Gretel or Game of Thrones. Story is actually the best way the human brain processes and retains information. It's scientific. For instance, rather than saying, this is our product, you might say something like, you know, Sharon was concerned with efficiency issues at her manufacturing plant and she was assistant plant manager. So she looked into logistics solutions and found our company and our solution. We implemented it and we helped her increase efficiency and she even got a promotion. Now that's a story. It's not summer camp counselor time. It's actually the best way to get an idea across to an intended audience. So today, I'll share some overall lessons like the fact that stories connect us emotionally, turning strangers into friends and prospects into customers. Now, for so many of us, that's what it's really all about. Whether we're in marketing or sales or we're creating stories for entertainment or if we're trying to raise funds for a nonprofit, it all comes down to building an engaged audience that will support our efforts. Now, I'll also show that while the storytelling platforms may vary, the power of story is the constant. It doesn't matter if you're a filmmaker or a social media influencer, story wins every time. Now we'll go through each season together and you'll hear from some of my guests. I've had the immense privilege of spending hours with some tremendous minds in business and marketing, communication, writing, filmmaking, podcasting, and more. So I'll bring you a little taste of insights from different walks of life from storytellers. And finally, my goal is to teach, but I think more important than that, at least in my mind anyway, is to inspire. Like I said, I know that you have an important story to tell the world. It doesn't matter if it's a business story, a personal story, a social justice story, or a tale about why you work for a nonprofit. You think the thing that separates us from all other life on earth is story. 
you will walk away with insights and inspiration both. All right, let's dive in. Now, our first lesson is this. You have not because you asked not. Now, when I started planning my podcast back in 2017, I knew that I wanted to talk to interesting people. And I also knew that I'd want some of them at the beginning to have an audience of their own. See, launching a new thing, I knew I'd need some help. I mean, I had zero audience to offer these early guests. And I figured if a guest with a big audience shared our interview and people liked it, maybe they'd stick around and build an audience for my show. But I also knew that I was a virtual nobody in this vast world of media. I mean, I'm barely known in my own house or hometown. <laughs> Who'd want to join me for an interview on the internet? So I reached out to guests that I personally knew who had their own platforms and audiences and would likely help me out. Then I envisioned some of my dream guests and I just reached out. Now, I've had people ask me how I ended up with well-known folks like Zig Ziglar's son, Tom, or New York Times bestselling authors like Eric Weinmayer, with marketing legends like Seth Godin on my show. The reality is, I simply asked. I'm sure, I've heard no more than once, and that's okay. Mike Rowe said, not right now. CBS News reporter and storytelling genius Steve Hartman said no. Even my own friend, Laura Fitton at HubSpot, said no thanks. That's completely fine. I'm okay with no. I've heard yes so much more, and I decided early on that no is okay. It's always the radio silence that really bothers me. But anyway, you need to just ask. And here's what that looks like. So this is what it looks like to plan out an entire year of interviews. This is 2018, my first four seasons. You can see the main columns, plus I have a list in the lower right corner there of people who didn't get back to me or maybe who said no. But you can see that I planned out exactly who I'd ask, where they'd fit in the season, and how the communication was going at the time. Of course, this is a completed year, so it looks all easy in the same color. But here's what it looks like right now in May of 2019. Now, as season six is going live and I'm working on recording for season seven, Entertainment Storytellers, you can see how it all comes out. I have a couple recorded, a couple scheduled, many others that I'm waiting to, to hear back from or to schedule. As you can see, I'm not afraid to aim high. Now, because of that, I do plan on more than enough people in case they don't answer me or you know, they tell me no. But it always seems to work out in the end. So again, simply ask. And yes, I am hoping for Tim Allen or Jeff Daniels because here's what happened. I interviewed David Lorenz of Pure Michigan, and he knows them. And we had such a great conversation, and he liked the show so much that I simply, again, asked if he'd make an introduction. So if you're taking notes, jot that down. It never hurts to ask. Speaking of, part of my ask for my potential guests is, of course, a story. See, I cast the vision of a podcast that would inspire people to tell better stories on their own. And that story helped me to connect and evoke emotion with my potential guests early on. And that is the second lesson. Stories hold power. So many of my guests shared with me how powerful stories are in their own work. David Meerman Scott, Seth Godin, Joe Polizzi, National Geographic photographer Robert Miller, Simon Sinek's writing partner David Mead. They all agree that emotion and connection is what moves people. So whether you're trying to get people to support your nonprofit, to, to buy from your business, or hire you for your next job, or maybe agree to appear on your podcast, <laughs> stories are what connect people to you and guide them to make the choice you're hoping for. Now, here's an example of a story. This is the invitation that I emailed to an early guest. I was sharing my mission, my why, my plan, and how it all comes together, because I love it when a plan comes together. Of course, I use a little flattery in my note. And I want my listeners to learn from the best, which we both know as them, of course, right? But overall, this is an authentic story that helped me to book some serious talent on the show. So take this note if you're writing things down. Stories hold power and use that power. Telling the story of my show helped me find those early guests. Okay, another overarching lesson, a big picture thing that I've learned, which has actually caused my branding of the show to evolve a bit, is that stories change the world. In fact, one of my guests from season three, Billy Wong, desires to change the world with a capital W as she changes the world's small w of those whom she serves. You see, Billy wants to end racism one story at a time. She found an organization called Baycat, which teaches underserved and at-risk youth how to tell stories, specifically through video. And their students have gone on to win Emmys, create national advertising campaigns, film documentaries, and more. Not only have those stories changed the worlds of the people making them, they're actually changing the world at, at large. Now, these stories of these young people and what their America looks like bring to light the real-life emotional stories that humanize this big idea, a broad, sometimes scary issue our country faces. So instead of thinking about racism in general terms, where we're able to kind of disconnect from it, 
the public actually hears personal narratives of their fellow human beings, making it all the more real. It's so much harder to disconnect when you're emotionally invested in others. That's empathy. So here's your note to jot down. Stories change the world. So those are the big picture things. Let's get granular. Now in season one, I interviewed writers. These were authors of books, bloggers, business writers, inspirational writers, people in entertainment, all varieties of written word storytellers. And the biggest lesson I learned, you have to write consistently. Now, Tammy Chupp, a West Michigan author, turned a tragic story of the death of her son into a story of hope, of faith and inspiration. During her conversation, Tammy told me that she never thought of herself as a storyteller before the show. Even though she wrote a book and would tell the story of Daniel, she didn't wear that badge of storyteller. Instead, for Tammy, it was almost like therapy. Her writing helped her deal with this tragedy of losing her son 20 years earlier, and she hoped it just might help others. But what Tammy realized and shared with me was that being a storyteller all started with having to sit down and actually write. Now, here's a side lesson for you. Not everyone considers themselves a storyteller or have given themselves permission to wear that badge. That's you right now watching this. You're not alone. Others feel that same way. And let me tell you, you are a storyteller. So Eric Weinmayer is a blind man who has taken up the mantle of adventurer, despite what others see as a disability. He wrote the books Touch the Top and No Barriers and launched an entire No Barriers movement and organization. The No Barriers Foundation helps others with different capabilities or disabilities, whether they're born with them or maybe they're military veterans with mental and physical health issues post-war. Now, within that, and through his books and other writings, and even through speaking, Eric uses story to inspire others to overcome adversity. And Eric calls that writing process incredibly powerful. Finally, Marcus Sheridan joined me on season one to talk marketing and story. Author of They Ask, You Answer, and Marketing Thought Leader, Marcus says a big part of storytelling is to simply answer questions, helping others. And it can all come through in a story format. It doesn't have to be this complicated, epic thing. He says that nothing beats clarity when it comes to effective communication, quite like writing. Now, the next group of storytellers that I went after were podcasters. I figured, why not connect with the community I was breaking into, right? Plus, at the time, I reckoned I might be able to reach some big names in the podcast world to connect them to the company I worked for at the time. And it pretty much worked all right, making a name for me personally and for the business for the business in the community. Now, the biggest lesson here is that to be a better storyteller, you just have to create. Now, it's a little bit like the last lesson of consistent writing, but with podcasters and other mediums, it's a little bit different. Writing is certainly part of it, but creating is more. So let's get into those details. Now, first of all, it doesn't matter if it's your story or if you're picking up the mantle of someone else's story. See, Kevin Miller hosts The Ziggler Show. It's the legacy of legendary speaker Zig Ziggler. Kevin co-hosts some episodes with Zig's son, Tom, one of my guests from season five, but mostly does it on his own, especially when he's interviewing guests. And while Kevin is speaking for the Ziggler brand, he still manages to inject his voice into that story. Now, the consistent creation of episodes and interviews is what makes Kevin a powerful storyteller. You see, if Kevin didn't create all the time, he says, his skills would atrophy and his reach would shrink. Being a powerful storyteller means creating consistently. Now, for Dave Jackson, it goes beyond creating, even though that's a major part of Dave's story. He's created so many different podcasts and has so much experience that he's turned it into telling his story through his vehicle, the School of Podcasting and Brand, including a very popular and amazing podcast. In fact, he was inducted into the Podcasting Hall of Fame in 2018. Now, in addition to creating a ton, Dave suggests experimenting with different ways to tell your story. Now, he's launched podcasts about his health journey in addition to multiple shows teaching people about podcasting and more. And Dave tries new tools and platforms all the time. He's not afraid of them. He experiments with podcasting along with live social media video and speaking engagements and so much more. My takeaway from Dave, Try something new, see if it works, and keep creating. Being a powerful storyteller means creating creatively and trying new things. Now, finally, from the podcasting world, I'd like to introduce you to Jordan Harbinger. Jordan keeps creating despite kind of losing his own brand that he helped start and cultivate. And it all happened relatively recently. They didn't phase this storyteller. See, a few years ago, Jordan launched The Art of Charm, a book, a podcast, a website, and so much more. Then he abruptly lost it all in a dispute with his co-creator. But he didn't let that stop him. Instead, 
Jordan took control of his story and his personal brand and just kept creating. Being a storyteller didn't stop when things got rough. And part of becoming a great storyteller is to just keep creating and honing your craft until it's great. Or as Jordan called it in our conversation, sticky. Now the Jordan Harbinger show is even bigger than what he had with his previous show. And it's all his story. Great storytellers aren't afraid to keep creating in the face of adversity. They create tenaciously. So again, if you're taking notes, take that one. You have to create with creativity and tenacity. A season three kicked off my conversations with video creators, filmmakers, makers of marketing videos, photojournalists, mental health advocates. Yep, you heard me right, mental health advocates. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But it was a great season. And my biggest lesson here, in its power to connect and move people, video is second only to face-to-face -face interactions. You see, in-person connection may be where it's at with stories for most of us, but video is very close behind. And Nick Nanton takes this seriously, creating short documentary style videos or mini films for his clients at Celebrity Branding Agency. Now, whether it's taking an entire team to the slums of Port-au-Prince, Haiti, chasing down child traffickers for a powerful documentary film and nonprofit, or it's creating an award-winning brand story for a used car sales operation. That's right, award-winning used car sales. Nick says video brings a power little else does in the world. And when story connects, branding really blossoms. It's amazing what you can do in a five-minute mini film or a 30-minute business documentary. I mean, think about all those singing competition shows we watch. It's the stories that move us. Those short vignettes can be powerful. And video also has the power to heal. See, coupled with virtual reality or immersive experiences, video is extremely powerful. And Sarah Hill knows this. She's the founder of StoryUp and has brought together a tribe of storytellers, psychologists, developers, filmmakers, audio engineers, and technologists to help others. And StoryUp created a product called Helium. That's heal, like make you feel better. That helps manage anxiety, post-traumatic stress, and more through VR. Using video stories is actually changing the world of mental health. And it's also brought experiences to people who can't get out of their homes. In fact, that's how Sarah and I met first. When I was vice president of Talons Out Honor Flight in Southwest Michigan, Sarah and her business partner, Michelle Spry, came to town with something called Honor Everywhere. And we took VR headsets to an assisted living facility in order to literally bring Washington, D.C. to veterans who couldn't make it on an honor flight of their own. Video transported these men and women to our nation's capital and moved some of them to tears. Video storytelling is incredible. Now, it's also powerful when it comes to turning a complicated thing into something we can all understand. Besides being a fantastic author and audiobook narrator, Rand Fishkin is co-founder of Moz, an SEO tool you may know and may even use, and the creator of the popular SEO video series, Whiteboard Friday. Now, he's also co-founder of the new company, Spark Toro, so check him out there. But while at Moz, Rand put video to work to connect with an audience over a complicated issue in a relatively simple way, and it worked. Rand taught many everyday people like you and me the basics of SEO and helped democratize this jargon-filled, complicated industry just a little bit. And he did it through video stories. So serve your audience and tackle issues in new ways. And if you haven't thought about video before, you just might want to because it's time to broaden our horizons and grow beyond our comfort zones. Now, here's the deal. I don't want to just word vomit on you with this presentation. I want to help actually inspire real change for you right now. So here's a quick exercise to put this into action. Storytelling doesn't have to be complicated and video doesn't have to be this huge ordeal. Mad respect to video production companies out there in the world, but sometimes video can simply be from your phone. So here's what I want you to do. Take out your mobile phone, record a quick story about your day. Where are you? What are you doing? What are you learning? How do you feel about it? Maybe who would you ask to be on your own podcast? Because remember, you're not afraid to ask anymore, right? Share it in social media. It could be Facebook Live, maybe a LinkedIn video, an Instagram story. Put it on YouTube, whatever you want to do. But check it out and use the hashtag storytellers and tag me in it if you can. Let's make this video storytelling thing a community event. I'll give you a few minutes. Go ahead and pause this and take charge of it. Okay, welcome back. You're over halfway through all this. Let's get to lesson seven. This is from my fourth season. Social media storytellers. I had a ball with this one, and I learned that while many of us may think that social media has ruined real storytelling with our ADHD and no attention spans, and we've railed against the terrible downside to it all, social media is really the next frontier in storytelling, and it's an exciting time to be a creator. 
In fact, for Geraldine de Reuter, social media helped her find an audience for her blog and her book, and it continues to act as an agent for social change. Not only does she share stories that she feels need attention in the world, but her husband actually challenges her to read things in social she wouldn't normally consume, broadening her perspective. And we could all learn something from that, getting new perspectives and truly making social media social, interact with kindness and a curiosity. And a side note, Geraldine also uses social media storytelling to connect with a community of writers out there just like her. And it's a great way to find like-minded creators. Now for comedy writer, James Breakwell, known as Exploding Unicorn on Twitter and well, basically everywhere else, social media quite literally changed the course of his storytelling journey. James uses social to test jokes, to hone his writing skills, and to build his own audience. And with somewhere around 2 million followers across all platforms, I think he's doing something right. Of course, it didn't always go exactly as planned in a couple of ways. First of all, his secondary Twitter account that he had uh, called Very Lonely Luke, a Star Wars parody, actually went viral first. But because he'd been consistent in creating on his own main account, when that account, Exploding Unicorn, went viral, people actually stuck around. Now, social media also helped James break into a writing career he'd always dreamed of, becoming a published book author and columnist for the Indianapolis newspaper, The Indy Star. Now, he ended up with an invitation to become a regular contributor with his own column, just like his childhood hero. His goal in life, you see, was to be a humor columnist like Dave Barry, and it took social media storytelling to get him there. A bit non-traditional. Still need convincing on the power of social media storytelling? Well, Michael Stelzner turned this new way of wasting time and into an into an entire career focused on an emerging industry. Very serious stuff. He launched Social Media Examiner and, of course, a huge event in San Diego, Social Media Marketing World. Now, much of his success, of course, came from blogging and a main website, but a critical component was and still is social media storytelling. In fact, Mike uses YouTube as a social media platform and storytelling vehicle to promote the brand and event, as well as build a loyal audience. The journey follows Mike and his team as they grapple with all things related to running social media marketing world, driving awareness, consideration, and decision for the event and its tickets. It's a great use of multiple platforms for story. I kicked off 2019 with the fifth season of Storytellers Network and my favorite season so far, Inspirational Storytellers. And I know I shouldn't have a favorite, but I can't help it. This was so much fun. Now in this season, I learned that stories motivate. The reality is facts tell, but stories sell. Numbers don't usually matter. We don't remember them. But the emotional component of a story can change the course of life for people. Now, maybe you're selling a story of community healing through authentic stories of struggle, violence, and murder, and redemption like Will Latif Little. You see, Will went to prison for killing a man in a gang-related shooting in Philadelphia. But now he speaks on things like redemption and forgiveness. In fact, the victim's own brother and Will work together now, and they help the youth in their community. And Will tours the country speaking. He has a book. He's a TEDx speaker. Story has changed his life. And he's changing the lives of others with his inspirational tale. Rather than just talk about numbers of gunfights, gang numbers and membership, how many deaths he saw or years in prison, and th you know, the days, that kind of thing, all those numbers, Will shares his very personal story of coming from a broken home, of abuse, life on the streets, violence, prison, and redemption. Now, those numbers can be powerful in some capacity, sure, but we know that the real power comes from story and is what people ultimately connect with and where they find inspiration. Now, for David Powell, his story of adversity is helping him to sell a new career. David's story can be boiled down to his brand motto, no arms, no feet, no problem. But sometimes you have to not only tell your story, but show. And here's what I mean. So Dave, when David was younger, he told me he tried to get a job at a call center in, in his hometown. He said it was an easy job and the company was in such need of people that basically anyone could get hired, except for him, apparently. His interview went well, he said, but he didn't hear back and he knew what was going on. This wasn't new to him. So he marched into the business, spoke with the director of the call center, and proved that he could do the job. And now he's doing the same thing with his new career, working to book motivational speaking gigs in the Kansas region and working to expand his reach by showing, not just telling, and motivating people with the power of his story. Look for good things to come from David Powell in the near future. But how do we own our story and turn that into inspiration for others? Well, that's what Arthur Joseph does and what he teaches. He's the vocal awareness coach to major media personalities. Over the years, he's coached megastars like Angelina Jolie, Emma Smith, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the game day morning team on NFL Network, Zoe Deschanel, and many others. Now, a big part of what Arthur teaches is how to listen, 
change vocal inflection, change pace, and more. Arthur says one inspiration for his teaching and his style is the difference between the music world and traditional spoken vocal performances. He says singers have the advantage of looking at music where it tells them everything to do. But traditionally, as storytellers, we only have words on a page, maybe. So he teaches how to annotate those words so they really come alive. Arthur's episode is full of lessons for storytellers. And the overall takeaway is this. When we own our voice with a capital V, our voice, we own our power. All right, in season six, the Storytellers Network focuses on those in the business world. I talked with marketing thought leaders, business leaders, sales professionals, a rock star event planner, and so many others. And what have I learned? Well, like everything else, storytelling is evolving, and we need to as well. Now, first of all, if you're in marketing or sales and these first two episodes of this season don't scare the hell out of you, you are not paying attention. Seth Godin and Mark Schaefer each tackle the current marketing landscape with me, and they agree on some things and differ on others, of course. You can listen to the conversations back to back for that. But where they agree is that marketing, which is what we all have to do for our stories to reach their intended audiences, right? Well, marketing has changed. You must think of your story as better than average and always strive to meet that expectation. By the way, read their books or go listen to Douglas Burdett's The Marketing Book Podcast with their interviews for the Cliff Notes version. But that material is great stuff and you need to check it out. So, of course, beyond the creation of story, you have to get it out to the audience, right? The problem, according to Chad Pollitt, is that most storytellers, especially content marketers, concentrate their efforts and budget on creation all but ignoring distribution and promotion. He says that for every $5 we spend on content creation, we only spend $1 on distribution and promotion. He says we need to take a page from the book of television ad executives and flip that. See, they spend $5 on distribution and promotion for every $1 spent on creation. Chad also had an interesting take on storytelling in the internet age. I'll leave you to hear that on the interview. Now, how else is story evolving? Well, according to the authors of The Go-Giver, if we want our stories to get out there, we really should go beyond the usual tactics and give more. Bob Berg and John David Mann round out season six of the Storytellers Network. It's a two-part season finale. I interviewed each of them separately, and they were terrific and in-step. It was incredible. The go-giver philosophy is to give more value than expected, which they both did. Do that with your story, and you'll build a grateful, supportive audience. They both talked about what an incredible community they've been fortunate to build through storytelling. So here it is, time for my final lesson that I've learned from 70 conversations with storytellers. Nothing measures up to starting a podcast. Seriously, I've had the opportunity to get more than 70 hours of personal instruction and mentoring from amazing thought leaders. And I've been able to connect with top tier storytellers that I'd love to have on my show, like Mike Rowe, Dirty Jobs, The Way I Heard It, Bob Goff, author of Love Does, DJ Nash, creator of the ABC show, A Million Little Things. Now, some of these were not right now, but some of them, are in the works. And other amazing people like Joe Polizzi of Content Marketing World, Dave Sanderson, who was the last passenger off the plane on the Miracle on the Hudson, is now a motivational speaker. Zig Ziglar's son and CEO of the Ziglar brand, Tom, and so many others have spent time with me pouring out their stories. But no one, not one of them, would have ever taken my message from me if it weren't for having my own platform. I mean, can you imagine trying to call up Rand Fishkin or Scott Monty and just saying, hey, can we talk for an hour? <laughs> yeah, right. Unlikely. But if I have a platform, they have a reason to talk to me and I bring value to them, that's the key. So if you want to learn more about podcasting, personal, business, or other, maybe start your own show, I put together a quick start guide. It's on my website, storytellersnetwork.com slash launch. It's on your screen right there. So here's the wrap up. After 70 podcast conversations about storytelling, I've learned that you, you have not because you ask not. So don't be afraid to ask. And as you ask, Stories hold power. So use stories. You see, stories can change the world. And as a storyteller, you have to write, but you also have to create. And video is second only to face-to-face. -face, so use video and get ready for the next frontier. It's social media. Now, stories, they motivate because while facts tell, stories sell. And storytelling has evolved. So should we. And finally, podcasting is powerful. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And there's my information. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Cheers.